What's up guys, today I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about these awesome lizards called gargoyle geckos. What the heck was that? Hey, what are you doing up there? I'm a gargoyle. So gargoyle geckos get their name from the two little knobs they have on top of their head that makes them look like the gargoyle statues. Now one really cool thing about gargoyle geckos is that they are cousins to the giant gecko, the Rachidactylus lichianus. And this is a lychee or a giant gecko. This is the largest species of geckos in the world and their cousins to the gargoyle gecko. All these guys, including the crested gecko, come from the same island of New Caledonia. They inhabit subtropical forests where they're typically semi-arboreal. You'll find them in the lower shrubs and trees and the giant geckos will inhabit the taller canopy. One thing that sets gargoyle geckos apart from some of the other gecko species from New Caledonia is that they are very cannibalistic. As babies, you do not want to keep these guys together or they'll start eating their limbs and tails and they'll just start to eat each other. They have these very thin, razor sharp teeth, unlike the crested gecko, that are made to hold their prey down and they love eating geckos. Fun fact about gargoyle geckos is these guys can live a pretty long time. Average lifespan is about 15 years, but we actually know of some gargoyle geckos that are in their 30s. Pretty crazy. This guy actually right here that I have in my hand is one of our oldest males. He is about 12 years old and he's still pumping out babies. So gargoyle geckos are semi-arboreal lizards. What that means is that they're gonna spend a lot of their time in the lower canopies climbing and, and jumping from branch to branch. Now, gargoyle geckos are a little bit of a heavier bodied gecko. As you can see, they do love to jump. When we set up their enclosure, you wanna make sure it is a vertical enclosure instead of a horizontal. More vertical space is always good for arboreal species. You wanna make sure that it has a good substrate that's gonna hold the humidity. We like to use mulch. It's a good substrate where it's not gonna to get too wet, but it is gonna hold some humidity. But you could use, you know, sphagnum moss, you could use peat moss, you could use like soil. It just depends. You want to make sure that there's no like fungus or too much of a growth growing in the in the substrate. You want to make sure it's humid but not wet. These guys, like I said, they like to climb. So you want to make sure you have a lot of branches. We like to add a lot of vertical branches, horizontal branches, diagonal branches, just making sure that the animals can climb any which way they want and a lot of foliage. The foliage allows them to break those visual barriers, it allows them to feel more secure. No gecko likes to be in a big open space. They wanna feel like if at a drop of a dime, they could hide in between something and get away from a predator. So you wanna replicate that in their environment. Gargoyle geckos, like a lot of the New Caledonian geckos or nocturnal geckos, are not gonna need UVB or heating. Cool thing about gargoyle geckos is they are a little bit more tolerant to the heat than a crested gecko per se. If you have them in a big enough enclosure like this one, this is a 18 by 18 by 24 size enclosure. We could actually, if we wanted to, we could provide like a 25 watt heat bulb on one of the corners or even a heat mat on one of the corners. They actually sometimes will come out and soak in that additional heating. That's not required. And if you're not sure what you're doing, I always recommend to go with room temperature because that is just just like a cookie cutter way to do it and there's no way you're gonna make a mistake like that if you want to provide additional heating and your enclosure is big enough where the gecko could escape the heat if it wants to then you could add that additional heating you want to make sure that they have a little bit of thicker branches than let's say a crested gecko or a smaller gecko species these guys do love to hide just like the crested gecko but they will actually come out during the day a lot of times and just hang out in the open so when we're talking about the temperature, 75 to 78 degrees is ideal for the ambient and the humidity, you want it to be 60 to 80%. You don't want it to be too wet because these guys can develop bacterial infections if it's kept too wet. As you can see in the enclosure, we like to add a water bowl and a food bowl and oftentimes they will go and drink out of the water bowl. But if you don't wanna add a water bowl, you could also give them a mist every single day and they will lick up the droplets from the sides of the enclosure 
and the leaves. So another way to keep your gargoyle gecko is in a plastic tub just like this one. The one thing to keep in mind when you're keeping gargoyle geckos in these tubs is that the humidity buildup is a lot bigger than in your average glass tank. You want to make sure these guys are very susceptible to humidity problems as far as like infections and bacterial respiratory infections and stuff. So you want to make sure that you have enough ventilation and you're not going to miss this enclosure the same way you missed the glass enclosure. You want to keep a water bowl in there, make sure they're not going to spill it. And as a substrate, make sure that it's not damp. You want to make sure if anything is on, a little bit on the drier side, especially when it comes to tubs like this one. If you're keeping them in tubs, you're going to be able to keep a lot more geckos in a lot smaller space um, and you could stack them. They're easier to clean. They're easier to move around. So it's definitely a benefit if you're looking to have a big collection of gargoyle geckos. It's also a little bit more sanitary because it's cheaper. You could replace the egg cartons. You could replace the paper towels if that's what you're keeping them on. And it's just easier to maintain and clean if you keep a larger collection. Same concept as the other enclosure. You want a lot of stuff for them to hide in between a lot of stuff for them to climb around and of course if you're keeping them in something like this and you don't want to be misting all the time it's always good to have a lay box or a humid hide where they could retreat to if they feel like they need a little bit extra humidity to get off some additional shedding welcome back to cooking with manny today we're going to serve up some gargoyle gecko food what do we feed them same thing as the crested gecko the crested gecko diet it's a great diet for all of these new caledonian geckos basically it's just a powder you mix it with two parts water and it becomes like a smoothie baby food type of consistency and that's what we mainly feed them and then once a week we do like to feed insects it is agreed upon that gargoyle geckos do like a little bit more protein than crested geckos they are a little bit more carnivorous so that's why we will give them some extra protein here and then mainly with like stuff like grubs and fruit or pangea breeding formula and again it's this is our two favorite brands this is what we use this is what we've been using for years with great success pangea and rapashi now let's serve up some gargoyle gecko food Mmm, looks delicious. Again, you know, you don't want to serve too much food. If, it, if you got a tiny baby, you don't want to feed it too much food. We like to give a couple drops. That's good enough for two days. For the adults, we want to give them a bit more, obviously. And again, you just don't want to feed too much because you're going to be wasting food. All right. Now what you all came for, the chef's got to taste his masterpiece. <clears throat> that gross and fruit is not the best. I, I way more prefer the watermelon or the papaya or apricot or any of the fruitier ones. This is not bad, but the gargoyle geckos love it. Another cool thing about gargoyle geckos is unlike crested geckos, these guys will actually regenerate their tails. A lot of times when their gargoyle geckos are breeding, they chew on each other's tail, they'll eat each other's tail, but these guys grow it back. Just like you can see in these two, they're actually midway in their growing back process. So these guys do have a little bit of a higher price point when starting off. They're very similar to Crested Geckos. The enclosure is gonna be, if you want like a fancy terrarium, it's gonna be about $200. And if you're gonna do like more breeder style tub, it's gonna be more around $50. But, so it's gonna be the same thing. But what makes these guys a little bit more expensive is them themselves. This is a more of a normal gargoyle gecko. It's gonna be more about $125 to $150. And this guy here is a red striped gargoyle gecko. These guys are gonna be on the upper end of what you're gonna to have to pay for them. Typically for a baby, you're gonna go around $500 to, you know, it could even go up to thousands of dollars depending on the lines and how red the red is actually on this animal. Honestly, once you have already spent all the startup costs, the month-to-month the -month maintenance is very low because these guys are kept basically like a crested gecko. They don't really need lighting and their food is going to cost you about, you know, $20 every couple months. So it's definitely a low cost animal once you're already set up and going. All right, guys, that's everything you need to know about gargoyle geckos. If there's any questions we didn't answer, please make sure you comment them down below. If you have any other questions, make sure you check out our website for additional information. You feel alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Covet and cash, I never lack though. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro.